To be a successful jockey, it takes more than just jumping on a horse. Chris McCarron, the Hall of Fame jockey, is founder and executive director of the North American Racing Academy. His school is drawing students from all over the world, all wanting to learn how to become a jockey. Just the, the thrill of going fast. I thought it was my calling, so uh, I applied and, and got in. You have to be able to feel them. There we go. <laughs> Breaking from the gates, it, that's all fun to me. <laughs> I love getting up and riding every morning. It keeps me up at night because I get so excited about it. <laughs> Despite the fact that we've got the best racing in the world, uh, we've never had a place to formally train young, young men and women how to ride thoroughbreds at 40 miles an hour. Whereas just about every other country in the world that has a racing industry has a school through which young men and women must go before they can even apply for a license. That's gonna be my goal. Once I prove the benefit to the industry and the legitimacy of our program, I'm gonna be going around lobbying the racing commissions around the country to establish some sort of uh, testing standard that a, ap a jockey applicant must go through before they can go ahead and get a license. Uh, that's the way it is in every other country and that's the way it should be here. <laughs> He's like, what is that thing? Life on the backstretch of the racetrack is not an easy life. It starts very early in the morning. A lot of trainers start their, their work at 4.30 in the morning, and it's an all-day job. The horses don't get fed at the end of the day till about 3.30, 4 o'clock. And when the races are going on, sometimes the races are, are conducted at night, like at Turfway Park. Uh, so it's a very long day for the staff and, and for the horses. Uh, so uh, we decided to go ahead and try to replicate as closely as possible the long hours and the arduous work that goes into uh, learning how to work uh, on the backstretch of a racetrack or on a farm. You can't always go to a farm and ask them to, to teach you how to ride because they're not always going to have your best interests. Uh, like the teachers and instructors like Ellen and Lori, they have them teaching us how to ride, how to stay on, how to, how to fall, on, you know, not to get injured and it's designed to really see if you want it and to, to, to teach you how to ride. Because we have, we have a lot of people here that, that had no riding experience and I think if they would have went to a farm, I don't think they would have learned as much as they could going here. And there they go. Moving out for the lead from the inside. That's a Matthew Strait. Center of the track also moving up. Anna Roberts, but it's Matthew Strait. Uh, having that exhibition race at Turfway Park, uh, where we pitted four um, graduates against five students that are in their second year, was just a blast. I mean, I was, uh, I was nervous. I was a nervous wreck because it was the first time that they had actually experienced some competition. But um, it, was, uh, it was really a lot of fun. I was going to community college back home after high school. I was always interested in the races. Uh, I grew up about 20 minutes outside of Saratoga Racecourse in New York. Uh, and my parents took me there when I was a little kid and uh, ever since then I've always really wanted to be a jockey. Always active in sports when I was uh, younger and, and uh, I think some of the sports outgrew me. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I figured I, if I'm athletic and I can use my small, small size to an advantage, you know, why not?
with Chris, you can ask him questions about every kind of scenario. And he's generally been through anything that you could possibly go through, different ways of breaking out of the gate, what to do when a horse stumbles in front of you, what to do with your horse stumbles, what to do if someone comes off and you're trying not to run over them, or just general race riding tactics. So with Chris, he's right there. And, um, you know, he lets you become your own rider. He doesn't try to make us all little Chris McCarrens. Okay, now short the range. Well, I always say it's kind of like uh, learning uh, basketball from Michael Jordan or Larry Bird or, you know, someone along that line. So, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's unbelievable to have someone in, in your corner like that. Uh, you know, it's, it, with all his knowledge and his racing, racing experience and big, big races, you know, he's raced everywhere, numerous countries. And, you know, just just to have that have that at your will is it's it's awesome. Physiological problems in their, in their throat. It's difficult for me to express the amount of pride I feel when I see all of the hard work that these kids have put into uh, learning how to ride and the dangers involved. They've all come off. They've all been hurt. Uh, they get back up and they go right out there and do it again, which really makes me feel good because they're they. Despite the fact that they understand there's a tremendous amount of risk, uh, they go out there and they do it anyway because they really want to do this. Oh, 